Today on Aussie Arvos, we're going to be building this. We are building from scratch a custom dash console to house gauges, switches, and a new head unit that will give my old four-wheel drive more features than most brand new cars on the road today. So as you guys would know, the 90s four-wheel drives weren't really that flash when it came to in-car tech and audio. And the patrol dash is no exception. I mean, it's very basic. You pretty much your main component is your heater controls and it's got space for a head unit or in the day what would have been probably a cassette player. Now, I want to modernize the inside of the patrol with all the new sort of creature comforts that you see in cars these days. And that's like a touchscreen display, um, sat nav, that sort of thing. But the patrol dash in its current form doesn't really lend itself to that sort of use. Um, where the head unit is placed currently is in quite a I think a sort of poor location for modern devices. It's right down near the gear sticks. It's sort of like you can't look at it and look at the road to operate at the same time. Um, and so instead, I'm gonna take it upon myself to make a custom console that will relocate it up to somewhere where it's usable, functional, um, better positioned, and at the same time, we're also gonna be tackling a bit of the audio uh, with a new subwoofer just to help the speakers that I've got in the car. So this is sort of something I've come up with, my CAD design or cardboard assisted design, as many of you would know I like to use. Uh, and it's very basic. It's literally just gonna be a box, essentially, that fits on the dash, uh, but it's got enough room to house my doubled in head unit, uh, as well as my JRP multi-gauge and room for a few rocker switches as well. So it should be very easy to make. I'm probably just gonna fold it up out of some aluminum or something like that, and then carpet it so it sort of blends in with the dash mat and the rest of the dash. Um, and it should be pretty straightforward. So. I guess without any further ado, we'll start marking this out on some sheet metal and then we can start folding it up and sticking it together. So to make up the console, I'm going to be using Ali. I did consider using timber, but I figured be able to fold Ali and work with it should be pretty straightforward. So what we're using is an old road sign. Um, we're pretty much using it because it's the only stuff we had that was big enough. So my plan is to make sort of one big sheet cut out that can be folded together into a box. Um, and that'll minimize the amount of joins I need to make. So I've got this, the alley here and we're just gonna start marking it out. Um, it's pretty basic dimensions and shapes and things, so it shouldn't be too hard at all. So essentially what this is, is just a big sheet of origami. It's like making a paper plane. Um, so it's actually gonna come together very easily, I think, once um, I cut it out. The hardest part is gonna be folding straight lines, but I should be able to jig it up with a couple bits of steel so that I get nice even folds. That'll fold back and then the top needs to fold. So I need a section of 80 long and they'll fold around and then meet at the, at the bottom. I started off by trying to cut it out with the tin snips, but it was leaving a bit of a jagged edge. So I ended up opting for the plasma cutter, which turned out to be a much better tool for the job. I gave the edges a quick clean up and then cut out slits for the tabs that I'd be using to hold the box together. All right, so I've been stuffing around marking and cutting and this is what we've ended up with. So essentially it's like a big yeah, piece of origami and the aim is to just fold all of these sections until it forms a box. Um, so I've included tabs on the sides of certain pieces, they're gonna be what I fix through. So I'm just gonna use rivets. Of course, Ali, I don't have a TIG welder. So yeah, we're just gonna fix it with the rivets. It's gonna be getting carpeted over, so you're not gonna see the joins. So I think it should be fine. So we're just gonna use, we don't have a folder, but we're just gonna use steel in the vise and a nice, you know, straight piece of steel to, to bend it. So we'll see how we go. It was a bit tedious trying to get nice tight folds without a proper sheet metal folder, but between my hands and the hammer, I managed to get some pretty good bends. I mean, hey, that works. So I got the box folded together. As you can see there, it's not the prettiest way to do it. Ideally, you want a set of proper sheet metal folders, um, but we're working with what we got, and it's come up pretty decent. There's a few few edges that are like a bit more rounder than they are a fold, but um, it's all come together all right. So we're gonna use pop rivets to stick it together. So as you probably would have seen, I did like tabs on the edges of some of the pieces, and they're just gonna be where I can pop rip it through to connect the sheets. So yeah, should hold it together pretty well. And then obviously, plan is to carpet over the top as well. So it should hide most of the rough edges. So yeah, I suppose we'll just, yeah, see how it turns out. Do your best, carpet the rest. <laughs> yeah, it does. All right, that's pretty good. And then, Right. 
Not too bad. Pretty, pretty good, really. Well, that's the box. Perfect. With the box held together, I began cutting out access holes as well as slots for my head unit, gauges, and switches. The plasma cut is sick. Never knew it would be so useful. So as you saw there, I just went and cut out our spot for the JRP multi-gauge, so that fits in nice now. Uh, and also cut out some holes for some rocker switches, which they don't look that pretty, but they do fit. And I just went over some of the sharp corners just with the flapper, just to smoothen it up. Now, it might look a little bit rough at this stage, which it does, but I'm hoping putting carpet across it all and doing a decent job of that should help sort of, you know, make it look neat. I mean, it's all square and everything. It's just a, like all the edges, which I think once I get the carpet wrapping over will really help. Um, so I've picked up some carpet from Bunnings. Now, a lot of people normally use marine ply, but I think they charge ridiculous amounts for marine ply. It was like $50 a meter. This is just the Bunnings, mind you, so I don't know how good that is, but $50 a meter. But instead, this is just like an interior sort of trim carpet. It was like half the price. It was like 25 bucks a meter. Um, and it's sort of a better match to my dash mat and the color of the dash. So I think it'll work just as good anyway. So I got some of this and the plan is to wrap the box in it. So the process for carpeting is gonna pretty much be like creating the same thing as what we drew out on the metal. Should bring me to there. All right. Should be able to get Stanley knife and cut her out. There. There you go. All right, so we've got our carpet cut out. That was pretty easy to do. Um, before we stick it on, I am gonna give the aluminium just a bit of a sand. I don't know if it does anything, but I figured, you know, if you have scratches or scuff the surface, just give something for the adhesive to grip to a bit more. Speaking of which, we're using this Permatex uh, carpet adhesive. I don't know, we just had it in the house. Patty used it years ago and it's, yeah, but it's got like a full can. And we just did a little test piece and it seems to hold pretty well. So yeah, we'll just start working our way along, start with the front and fold the edges around and hopefully it all comes together pretty well. Oh my God, that stuff is sticky. Honestly, that's not too bad. So I've just gone and cut out the carpet where all the instruments are gonna go. Now I'll show you what we're actually sticking in there. So this is the new head unit. This is a doubled in touchscreen head unit. It's from a Toto. Um, it's actually the same brand that Paddy has in his 80 series and that thing works awesome. So I had to get one for myself. Um, and this allows you to do all like your maps. It's got the full sort of Android system, YouTube, um, full stereo system, all that sort of thing. But we'll talk more about that once we've got it in the car. Um, and then also got a spot obviously for my JRP 14 in one to monitor my engine, boost EGT, all that sort of stuff. Uh, then I've got spots for three rocker switches, which will be used down the track. And also a spot on the side for USB outlet, which I'm gonna use for charging and like my quad lock and stuff like that. Another thing actually worth showing you as well is just how slimline these head units are now. Like it's pretty much like having a singled in on the bottom, but it's only that long. Um, I've just stuck these mounting brackets on, but I swear all head units used to be like that fat. So these means you can have a nice, you know, sort of narrow block. You don't have to have it super long. Dude, that looks actually sick. Not gonna lie. That's looking pretty sweet. All right. Let's see how we did. Yeah, that's sick. All right. Well. I suppose we've got to start with pulling that old one out. So we just pulled the old dash out of the car, pretty straightforward, just removed the fascia and radio popped out. Now we've got to extend the loom to get to where the radio is now going to be located. So obviously the factory harness, not long enough. So I've gone and bought some extension wire from JCAR, just in assorted colors, um, and that will help me extend it. Now it's pretty basic what we have to extend. I've only got like seven wires total. That's just left and right speakers, and then also constant power, ignition power and an earth. That's in terms of the hard wiring and then there's also a few other things we'll have to attach to the unit because this is a smart head unit. It also has like a GPS antenna, Wi-Fi antenna and 4G and so there's a couple other little things we'll have to run but it should be pretty straightforward like seven wires so we'll start stripping some stuff and connecting and we'll try and make it as neat as possible and get it get it powered on. Uh, now you probably can get like actual extension harnesses with plugs on the end. Uh, one, I didn't really know what plugs I was working with on the back of my unit. Uh, and secondly, when I did look up stuff online, they were like $100 for a, something like, so it was ridiculous, like a three meter extension, which I don't need. So instead, this was $6 from JCAR, so we're just gonna extend it ourselves um, and we should be looking pretty good. With all our connections made, we could then go and conduit the loom and this would allow us to run it neatly up behind the dash and pop out at its new location on top of the dashboard. I was then able to join the other end of the loom to the factory Nissan wiring harness. 
All right, so we just finished wiring up the majority of the loom now. We are, before we put anything back together, gonna to chuck the sub in as well. So this is the sub I've bought. It's just sort of a cheaper one, but it's the same one Patrick uses in his car. It's great for an under seat sub. It's, it's very slim, um, it's nothing crazy. And being an active sub, it means you don't need an amplifier to run it. So this will literally plug straight into the back of our head unit uh, and run off that. Now, a good thing about this subwoofer, because it is nice and compact, you can fit it under your seat, which was my plan. So I sat it down where I wanted it and ran the wires underneath the vinyl to it. And then we Velcroed it down to the floor, which would keep it in place. All right. And yes, sticking a sub on the floor isn't the greatest idea if you plan on doing deep river crossings, but this may not be its final location. I also have a reverse camera to go along with the unit. So I'm running the wiring from that alongside the others and out through the floor to be ran to the rear of the car. All right, so we've finished, I think, all of the wiring, hopefully. Uh, we're gonna give it a test run before we put it all back together, make sure it all works as it should. Um, and then if it does, we can put it back together. So, all right, ready? Moment of truth. I mean, it should work. Well, we got the gauge and lights are on. Oh no, here we go. Google. <laughs> oh, look at that, it's straight onto it. Oh, I don't have an antenna, so that's not gonna work. Oh my God, the display is so nice. Look at that. Dude, that's, such, that's in such a sick spot. Oh, and let's test the dimmer. Yeah. Oh, yes. It sounded like the sub was working as well. Like yeah, it's definitely working. <laughs> Gee, that's bassy. It's in such a good spot too. Because you know why it's in such a great spot? Because your passenger, it's in such a great spot because your passenger can operate it as well. Yeah, like exactly. think about how hard it is down here when you're trying to change yeah. gears or whatever and they've got yeah. their hands stuck in there. But if they want to handle the tunes, yeah. it's so easy for them with their right hand. It's actually closer to them. All right, so it is working, but before we get into everything that this thing can do, we are going to do a bit of a clean up. We have also got to run the rear camera as well. So we're going to do that uh, and also get a couple more rocker switches in here just to finish it off. Um, and, yeah, and then we'll get into all about what this thing is capable of. All right, so we're just sort of finishing up wiring now. I've got some rocker switches to throw in. I went and saw the guys at Air On Board and they sorted me out. So I've got three different rocker switches. I've got one for a front locker, which will be happening eventually. I've got an air compressor, which will also be happening eventually. Uh, and then I've also got a cool one, which I'm keen to use, which is winch in, winch out. So in cab winch controls, this is like a dual way switch. So it bounces back. So that's your winch in, winch out. Um, we just made up a bit of a piggyback loom. Uh, just to get the LEDs going to. So yeah, we'll get these plugged in and then it should be looking pretty sweet and then we can sort of worry about mounting it up completely. I also provisioned the actual switching wires for each of the switches and this will just ensure that when I go to use them, I don't actually have to pull the dash apart again. All right, so got the rocker switches all wired up, little bit of fiddling around, but got them done. So now they are hooked up. We've got them on the lights. So when I light, it shows front locker, air compressor, and then also got them on activation. So front locker, uh, air compressor and then winch in, winch out also shows which come up sick. Super happy with how that turned out. Now the last thing we sort of got to run out of this box is the antennas for the Atoto head unit. Um, this has got a few with it. Um, we're not going to use them all but I'll show you them. So the first one is the 4G antenna. So you can actually put a SIM card in this thing and it'll have its own cellular data. I'm not going to use that. I'm probably just going to hotspot it off my phone most of the time but that is the option there. Microphone input. I'm going to be hooking that up just so I can do hands-free calls. GPS. Now this is Awesome, this is actually quite a good GPS antenna and it means that whether you have reception or not, this thing is always gonna have its own GPS location. So as you can imagine, if you download a set of offline maps onto this and then you combine that with GPS, you're gonna have maps no matter where you are. So we're gonna definitely plug in that one, that's gonna be awesome. And the last one is Wi-Fi antenna. So, so I can hotspot off your phone, Wi-Fi antenna. Also, if you're pulling up near your house or whatever and you wanna use it, you can just hook up to Wi-Fi as well. So we'll get all these plugged in. I'm probably just gonna mount them on the back of the console here so let's do that so i've plugged in the antennas and we're just about to position them now they do come with sticky back tape but i actually sort of planned to use velcro that's sort of the reason why i went for the carpet so i've got some sticky back velcro and i'm just going to stick that on the antennas and then i can shift them wherever i want uh, same with the microphone i'm going to be able to put it wherever i like on the dash mat or on the console so we're actually going to be using velcro to mount the console i wanted to make sure i could lift it on and off easily and I definitely didn't want to drill into the dash because once you put holes in it there's no going back. So we're going to be using the Velcro. Um, I think it'll work well just double sided tape to the dash so giving it a quick clean and we'll stick it down. Oh pretty solid. Oh my god it's, it's ripping the freaking... Yeah literally. It's a sort of easy to feed in once I've got it sitting down. That's pretty cool I'm not gonna lie. 
Oh, can you set a background? Oh, can we put a background of the patrol on it? That would be sick. Oh, and the GPS should work, shouldn't it? Oh, yeah, so it tells us it, what... Bro, that's wicked. And it's just, like, simple to use as well. <laughs> How's that? You wouldn't think that, eh, for an old patrol? What YouTube in the head unit? That is so awesome. All right, we've got to get it back together now, though. Let's get it back together. With our first test successful, I could begin putting the interior back together, and I also ran the wiring to the rear of the car for our new reverse camera. Oh, my God. It's on its side, but, yeah, yeah. it works. Hang on, did that go quiet when I put reverse? Oh, it does <laughs> So you can concentrate, because yeah. everyone knows that when you reverse your car, your ears are very important. Yeah. So, hell yeah. With the interior back together. That actually looks really neat. That actually looks sweet. I could add the final piece of the puzzle, which was to cut out the dash mat to accommodate our new console. All right, let's see how we did. It worked out great using the dash mat as it allowed me to hide the cabling to the unit as well as blending with the carpet that I used on the console itself. That's not going anywhere. There you go. That looks freaking neat, dude. That looks really neat. That's turned out really well. It actually almost, I don't know whether you'd say it looks factory, but like, I reckon if Nissan had to do it, it wouldn't be far off. It fits in really well. Just because everything's sort of like, it's still got like sort of rounded edges, but like, it's still like square. No, that's sick. Yeah, the dash mat fits good. Makes it all transition smoothly. It's just like the whole top of the, and it hides all those cables. Dude, that's the other great bit. Very happy with that. Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. There's so many different things you can do. Aussie Arvo's head unit. All right, so we've got the Atoto head unit all installed. Everything's put back together and it seems to be working sweet. Now, I'm gonna run you through a few of the features and just exactly why I chose this head unit. So this thing is not your standard doubled in head unit. This is like having an Android tablet in the front of your car that also acts as a stereo. And it means you can do a whole variety of things like download apps, surf the web, get your map apps on there, all music display and everything like that. So let's show you a few of the features. So first off and most importantly, this thing is still a radio. So you've got your radio app, you can go in here, all your different radio channel frequencies are there. And I don't have an antenna hooked up, but from what I can see, it works awesome. Now, even though this is an Android head unit, it does still have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and the best thing is that they're wireless. So I can literally just go the CarLink app straight into Apple CarPlay, look at that, maps, everything you need. And yeah, being wireless is crazy because even a lot of new cars these days don't come with wireless and Apple CarPlay or Android Auto like this, so really cool. Now, in terms of playing music, obviously you've got your radio app, you've also got your Apple CarPlay. It also does have a Bluetooth audio, but you can also download apps to the head unit itself. So for example, I've downloaded Spotify or you can download SoundCloud or whatever you use, and you can download your music straight to the device, or if you have the 4G antenna, play it straight from the device uh, like that with a cellular connection. Um, and you can download all your songs, play them whenever you want. It's really easy to use, and it means that you don't have to rely on your phone for music. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not using the 4G antenna and I'm not putting a SIM card in. So for me to get data to the device, I'm actually hotspotting off my phone and you can actually get an app on your phone that'll make it so that it connects to your hotspot when it detects the Bluetooth signal. So it makes it really easy. You know, As soon as it comes in range, it'll just connect automatically. Uh, and that means I can use all the apps, YouTube, Spotify, Google Chrome, whatever I want, and I'll have an internet connection through my phone. And if you can see where things are going, by the time you've got Wi-Fi and the ability to download apps, it means you can also get apps like YouTube and Netflix. So here's a video of when Patrick installed his a Toto head unit in his car. So YouTube, if you have to take a break somewhere or your passenger wants to watch YouTube while you drive, that's a pretty cool option there as well. Another cool little thing too, you might've noticed, I've actually managed to set a pretty cool background of the patrol on the back of the head unit. So a, gen a gentle reminder of what the car looks like while I'm driving it. <laughs> Now you're probably thinking, because it's a computer, it takes like 10 years to turn on, but that is not the case at all. We'll show you here. I'm gonna take it for the car for a quick drive. So you go to turn it on and pretty good. If you ask me, that's quicker than my old tiny little stereo used to be. So let's go for a drive and show you some of the mapping apps. Now, one thing I was actually thinking about when I was building this is making sure it didn't impede too much on obviously my viewing, but it's actually sit really well. Like the, the top corner ever so slightly clips past the bonnet, but it's really nothing, so it hasn't affected my viewing at all, um, and it just means it's in a great spot, easy to access and work with. <laughs> Look at that, so we've got the rear camera as well, and you don't have to just go into reverse to engage the rear camera, you can go into the app at any time, so if you're on the freeway and someone's tailgating you or whatever it might be, jump on the rear cam. I'm actually pretty cool, keen to use it when we're out four-wheel driving, if you've got to back down somewhere, you can see what's behind you, so yeah. 
It's also worth mentioning that the viewing angles on this thing are great. Oftentimes with screens, you'll get sun beaming in and it like makes the screen really hard to see, but it helps how I've positioned it for one, but also just, it's a really good display. It's nice and bright. Um, no matter which way you look at it, you know, it doesn't have any haze or anything like that. Really easy to see. So it doesn't have to be centered in front of you to look at. Um, and it also has brightness settings as well, I'll mention. So when I turn the lights on, it actually dims, or if you want to actually manually dim it yourself for night driving as well, um, it all has that too. So as I've mentioned a couple of times now, it does have its own GPS antenna, and that's one of the main attractions with this stereo for me. I really wanted it so I can have a dedicated sort of maps system. Now, I've downloaded a few of the map apps that me and Patty use. So for example, Gaia GPS we've got on here. And it just means I don't have to rely on my phone for using maps. I've got a stationary device that I can use to navigate um, and all the maps are super accurate with that GPS antenna. And not to mention, it's a great spot with 64 gig of storage to download offline maps, have everything stored on here, ready to go. Um, so yeah, really keen to use that, especially when we start doing some uh, more remote touring. Now there's like a million more features of this thing, like expandable storage, hand gestures. It's got about, it's got enough RCA inputs to pretty much hold your own rock concert. Um, but we don't have time for all that today, but I will leave a link in the description to this exact unit, the Toto S8 Ultra. Um, these things come in at about 600 bucks. And honestly, I think it's probably the best head unit you can buy for the price. Um, especially compared to some of the more expensive Android head units out there. And now you're probably thinking, all right, well, it's cheaper and it's got all these features, but does it last? And the reason I got this is because, as you probably remember, Paddy installed one in his car about two years ago now, and he hasn't had a single issue. It's been absolutely flawless, and I envy it every time he goes and uses it. So I had to get one for myself. So definitely go check it out if you're in the market for a doubled in head unit, I highly recommend it. And looking at everything we've managed to do in this episode, the subwoofer turned out really good as well. That was actually quite a cheap subwoofer. I think I paid about 300 bucks for it. And that for a single cab especially sounds awesome. Really happy with that. And to have a head unit that has all the adjustability to really make it work well helps as well. Um, and just the whole outcome of the console too, like starting with a road sign and now it looks like this. It's pretty, pretty good effort if uh, I'm pretty happy with myself, if you can't tell. Um, and I think that having the dash mat and the carpet, it all blends in really well. It's in a great position. Um, it's not an eyesore when I'm trying to drive. It's not in the way. So uh, yeah, overall, just really happy with how it came out. And I'll be keen to see a few other people start doing this because I think it is uh, a pretty good way of doing it in the GQs that aren't really oriented towards having uh, head units like this put in them. So that's a wrap on the entertainment and audio setup in the patrol. Super stoked with how it turned out. So if you enjoyed this one, please leave a like and a comment. Let us know what you think down below. Um, and look out for the next episode. I'm sure we'll be working on the patrol again soon. So yeah, a good one to get done anyway. So cheers for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed it.